Hi all, Lee Veris here with Phototech Tuesday. Each week I'll be posting a new video about photography, technology, art, and well, you know the drill. Today I thought I'd talk about the hottest topic of the last couple of weeks. And that's right, we're talking about auroras, northern lights. Those crazy electromagnetic light shows have been making an appearance all over the place in much more southern locations than usual. And uh, because we didn't have to go to Iceland to see auroras, everyone and their brother has been posting photos taken in their hometown, all thanks to some extra strong solar flare activity. Uh, Bobby and I were able to photograph auroras at the Cranberry Bogs just down the street from our house. I was so lazy about it that I only brought my iPhone with me. But check this out. So this is kind of typical of what I, I got. You can kind of see this purple color in the sky. That was the aurora that I was experiencing uh, in, uh, in Massachusetts, just south of Boston here. Uh, we live in Carver, which is the sort of the cranberry capital. And uh, right now you were looking at uh, uh, the water trench here that's uh, outside of some fairly large bogs, uh, cranberry bogs. And uh, so this was a big open area, a lot of sky to look at, made it perfect uh, for shooting auroras. And uh, so as I mentioned, this purple color is, is the aurora. That, that thing that looks like the sun, that's actually the moon. So you can imagine this is a very long exposure. Um, it was about, I think, three or four seconds, and I'm hand-holding the iPhone, and I still get a sharp shot. It's amazing. Um, there's some kind of uh, image stabilization thing that's going on in the iPhone that's very sophisticated. You put it in a night mode and you can get uh, amazing night low light shots. Um, and like uh, this was the maximum amount of structure I got inside of the auroras. It's just mostly this sort of magenta and purple color. And this was about the most exciting aurora I saw the other night. Not, it's nothing like what you see in Iceland, which is more like this. Uh, and these are visible to the naked eye. What I was experiencing in Massachusetts was really not visible unless you were looking through the camera or your iPhone. So, um, yeah, we didn't see anything like this. And, uh, you know, there's a difference <laughs> between the auroras that we're getting in these southern locations and uh, what we were seeing in Iceland. So here, this is pretty typical. It's just a little hint of purple color. Um, and this, again, is an iPhone shot, uh, handheld. Um, pretty amazing that there's that there's this much detail in it. And I didn't really do that much uh, post-processing either, just a, a little bit of opening up the shadows. And uh, this is the kind of stuff we were getting. Um, now, because this is an iPhone and because it was low light and an iPhone has really kind of tiny little cheap plastic lenses, um, it is a supercomputer attached to cheap plastic lens. But when you, you know, when you get in there and you start zooming in, we're moving in on this little, uh, this is actually uh, a cranberry processing plant <laughs> that's next to the bog here. And as, as we move in, you can kind of see that the quality of the, of the capture actually is, is not really that great. You know, even though um, the iPhones have been getting higher res, um, that just means more pixels. It doesn't necessarily mean, you know, sharper image detail. This is, we're zoomed in pretty close here, 200%. But what I did is I, I took these into Magnific, which is an online um, image upscaler that uses AI. And uh, it kind of reinvents detail in the image. You can kind of see here um, just the structure of this, this tree and how much extra detail is being kind of invented uh, to replace the blobs uh, that are supposed to represent leaves over on the right. You can see on the left, that's Magnificent uh, upscaling this uh, and doing a really good job. So let's, let's take a look at that. So um, here we are. This is Magnific. It's, a, it's an online, you know, it's basically a website that you go to. And uh, there's an input image. Has, has now a couple of different things that it can do. So 
up here is the default. This is a, this is basically a text prompt image generator. So we, you type your prompt in here and you press go and you get uh, a new, a completely new image just from the text prompt. Um, Relight is something where you upload an image and describe a difference. You know, like you, you upload a nighttime image and you say, okay, I want it to be daytime or, you know, uh, you can relight or reimagine uh, a regular photograph. Then style transfer is we upload two images. So we, we have an input image that's going to be our style reference. And uh, or the image input image is what we're going to want to change. The reference image is the style reference. And so you can apply the color or the feeling of one image to another. Um, something that's, that's uh, very much in demand with the AI uh, image generation tools. And finally, the Magnific Upscaler. This was their original um, item that they had here. Uh, they've been adding things ever since they launched. Uh, but the, the Upscaler is really intended to upscale low-res AI images. So it's not really attempting to be absolutely accurate in its upscale, but it, it does do this unique thing, uh, which if we... I'm gonna, I'm gonna zoom in here. If you hold down the Z key, you can kind of get this to zoom in. And let's zoom in quite a bit here. You can kind of, you can already see as I move over this tree, how much more detail is it's putting in there. And everything about the, the upscaled version is sharper, clearer, uh, it does change some things, you know, so like it's really kind of changing the shape of these trees back there. But it does an amazing job of like inferring and adding detail that just isn't there in the original. Right. So this becomes now a much more serviceable image. Even this car is now, you know, much more uh, detailed. And uh, so... So basically, yeah, so all of this stuff, like if we zoom in on this one, and I'll, I'll point out one of the things that the, what it very often will do, will make shit up in, in clouds. It's like putting eyes in here. It's, it gets a little too creative, even though uh, you can control how it's doing things by these sliders. So if we want it to be more creative and more inventive, you can boost the creativity slider. I, I tend to leave it at zero, but even at, at zero, it's, you know, it's kind of adding an eye in here and these red blobs were not there. It's kind of weird. But if we look over in the image detail area here, um, you can just kind of see how much more detailed the detailed area gets. Uh, look, just definitely just makes that look so much cleaner and more more detailed. So how, this is basically how we're going to do it. I'm going to I'm going to upload another image just to demonstrate how this process works. So we find the image well up here, and I'm just going to drag another image into it, and then uh, we decide what kind of scale factor. And you can see down here at the bottom, this is the pixel dimensions that I'm going to get if I magnify this two times. So if I go four times, you know, I'm, I'm up there at 6,000 by 8,000. Uh, so this is a very high res image now, right? Um, you, your choices here now after the scale factor is optimized for. The standard is kind of, it just, it decides what, um, what data set to use to do the uh, upscaling. And you, you basically want to match your subject with these uh, different choices for optimization. You can always choose films and photography. That's that's what I do here. Because um, this is a photograph, I want it to look photographic, so I'll say films and photography. You can prompt, if you feel that uh, it needs some explaining, maybe uh, you can add something. In my, in my case, I'm, I just wanted to upscale this image and I'm not going to add any creativity or an HDR here as uh, these little question marks. Well, you know, if you kind of hover, click on them, it'll show you what that means. So as far as Magnific 
uh, is concerned, HDR means uh, just more detail. Uh, it's not high dynamic range, okay? Um, resemblance, how much it resembles. If you think, leave everything zeroed out, it's kind of a good starting place um, to do your upscale. In the engine here, we have a couple of different automatic. It, it chooses what which engine is, uh, what it thinks should go with that image. Um, and I've had pretty good luck just picking the one. Usually I, I pick Illusio, which is kind of the smoothest and, and the least detailed. If you pick like Sharpie, it'll put extra extra texture and extra detail. Sometimes it could just go over the top. So I, I generally pick the the least um, detailed engine here, this, this Illusio, just to make sure that I'm not getting too much stuff in it. And then we hit, we click on upscale and you'll see it starts working up here at the top. Uh, now I'm gonna, I'm gonna cut this down. It could take uh, several minutes for this to happen, depending on how much traffic is, is on the server. Um, so I'm gonna cut this short here and we'll, we'll jump right to it when it's done. Okay, here we are. And we've got this little before and after slider. At, at this zoom level, you really can't see that much has happened. Uh, but if I hold down that, that Z key on the keyboard, I can, I can scroll the mouse to get zoomed in and I'll just move down into the area here. Now I don't really expect to get too much down here. This was really low underexposed and so there wasn't a lot of detail in it but it does crisp up like all these little tree trunks get a lot crisper and it's you know kind of it's worked the edge with more detail in the trees and the water here has gotten a lot sharper and more crystalline looking. Uh, let's just see, oops, let's just see what else uh, we have going on here. Kind of interesting where it, it, it can kind of make sense of things. It really sharpens things up. Uh, it's decided that, you know, there's, there's grass over here uh, and so it's kind of inventing more detail than, than really should be there. But, you know, it's still pretty amazing, all things considered. Uh, not the best picture, but <laughs> still pretty amazing. So I recommend that you check this out. Okay, so uh, I used to use, I mean, my go-to upscaler has always been Topaz Gigapixel or Photo AI. Uh, and I always thought that it did a really good job uh, with, with good images. You know, if you have a, if you have a good sharp image and you want to upscale it, there's no better upscaler than uh, Topaz Gigapixel. However, what we're looking at here is Gigapixel on the left, which is upscaled the original iPhone photo and Magnific on the right. So Topaz is, is, is doing the best it can, but it's deliberately trying not to add anything. It only upscales uh, what's there. So it doesn't get creative with it. And, you know, basically uh, Magnific is just inventing all kinds of detail in here and it's changing things. It's changed the shape of these trees uh, it's changed a lot of stuff and just kind of invented extra detail that, you know, who knows what these blobs are. Uh, it kind of decided that this must be a car in here, and I'm not really sure that's what, what's actually there. Um, but all of these little details, I, I, they don't really have a huge impact on the nature of the image, right? So it's just a small area down here. The overall image looks pretty much identical. Um, it's just when you get into you get into the detail. I mean, look at look at the difference. There's just a tremendous amount more detail in Magnific's version. So uh, anyway, I just thought I'd show this as an example of uh, a different approach to AI upscaling and and why I'm now leaning much more towards Magnific for for most upscaling needs. 
Well, that's it for now. I hope you enjoyed this video and, and hopefully this has provided some inspiration for your own creative explorations. And do check out Magnific. It's, it's a bit expensive. They charge 30 bucks a month uh, to use it, but uh, you can always save up your images that you want to upscale and uh, do it for one month and then quit. <laughs> so at any rate, if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button and ring the bell so you don't miss another Phototech Tuesday. And I'll see you next time. Bye for now.